the top and bottom of a right circular cylinder are removed. So if this is the right circular cylinder, the top is removed and the bottom is removed. The cylinder is flattened into a 6 by 8 inch rectangle as shown below. So again, if we remove the top and bottom and flatten this right circular cylinder, we get this 6 inch by 8 inch rectangle. But it's important to recognize here that if we were to flatten this right circular cylinder, this rectangle here would have two layers, a front layer and a back layer. So let's expand our diagram to show this rectangle here if we cut it along this edge here and unfold the rectangle. So again, starting with the right circular cylinder, we remove the top and the bottom, and then we flatten the cylinder, and it forms this 6 inch by 8 inch rectangle. But the reason we have two layers is if we were to flatten this right circular cylinder, then the distance around this circle here, or the circumference of the circle, would be the same as the length of this side along the first layer, plus the same length along the back layer. So if we were to slice this rectangle along this edge here and unfold it, notice how it would give us this rectangle here where it's 6 inches by 16 inches. Again, because this rectangle had two layers, when we unfold the rectangle, this length would be twice as long, or 16 inches. So notice how this length of 16 inches would have to be equal to the circumference of this circle along the top of the right circular cylinder. So in order to determine the volume of this right circular cylinder, we need to determine the radius we need to determine the radius of the top and bottom. So the key to solving this problem is to recognize that the circumference of this circle would be equal to 16 inches. And the circumference of a circle is equal to 2 pi r. So we'd have 2 pi r must equal 16 inches. So if we solve this equation for r, we can then determine the volume of the right circular cylinder. So if we divide both sides by 2 pi, notice how we would have r, the radius, is equal to, notice here, 16 divided by 2 equals 8. So you have 8 divided by pi inches. And now that we know the radius of the right circular cylinder, we also know the height would have to be 6 inches. We can determine the volume of the right circular cylinder using the volume formula the volume equals pi r squared times h. Again, we know that h, the height, would be the length of this side here, which is 6 inches. And therefore, the volume of the right circular cylinder is going to be equal to pi times r squared. We're going to leave r in its exact form of 8 divided by pi squared times the height, which is 6 inches. It's not a good idea to round r here, find the volume and round again, because that would give us more of an error. So we'll have the volume is equal to pi, which I'll write as pi over 1, times 8 over pi squared would be 64 divided by pi squared times 6, or 6 over 1. Notice here we have a common factor of pi. So pi over pi simplifies to 1. So this pi simplifies to 1, and this pi squared simplifies to just pi to the first. So the volume is going to be equal to 64 times 6, which equals 384, divided by pi. And this is volume, and because the units are in inches, we would have inches cubed. So this would be the exact volume of the right circular cylinder. But let's also get a decimal approximation. So we'd have 384 divided by pi. To two decimal places, we'd have approximately 122.23 cubic inches. So again, we have an exact volume of 384 divided by pi cubic inches. And we have a decimal approximation of approximately 122.23 cubic inches. I hope you found this explanation helpful.